Banking ages were home to generations of religious women who sought to live a more independent life than that of women who married against their will. They made their homes, assisted the sick and poor, and sought to serve God without separating themselves from the rest of the world. The Flemish beginages are architectural ensembles composed of houses, churches, ancillary buildings, and green spaces, with a layout of either urban or rural origin, and built in styles specific to the Flemish cultural region. The beginages formed miniature towns, enclosed by walls or surrounded by ditches, with gates opening up to the outside world during the day. The beginages were organized according to one of two models. One, the city type, reflected on a smaller scale the model of the medieval city. The other, the courtyard type, with a central area, varied in shape but often consisted of a lawn planted with trees, where the church was located. The Beguines of Northern Europe have been called the first women's movement in Christian history. This group of religiously dedicated laywomen, who took no permanent vows, followed no prescribed rule, supported themselves by manual labor, interacted with the world, and remained celibate. The Beguines flourished in the 13th and 14th centuries, a time when the church had defined two legitimate roles for pious women, cloistered nun or housewife. With their freedom of movement, economic independence, and spiritual creativity, the Beguines carved out an unusually expansive and controversial niche for female religious expression. The origins of the Beguines can be traced to two important medieval religious reform movements, monastic mysticism and the Vita Apostolica, or apostolic life. As Catholic women devoted to prayer and good work, Beguines lived simply, wore loose robes and headwear similar to nuns' habits. But unlike nuns, Beguines took no religious vows. They could leave the community and marry if they chose. They could own property and took no alms. Women of all classes were welcomed. They carried on professions, often in the textile industry. They elected women to be leaders, the so-called grand dames, who were often assisted by an elected council. Each begging was expected to support herself and make a tangible contribution to the beginage, either through labor or rental income. The 13 UNESCO-designated beginages are located in the Belgian cities of Ghent, Louvain, Kortrijk, Mechelen, Bruges, Dendermonde, Turnout, St. Amensburg, St. Tweden, Lier, Diest, Togeren, and Hoogstraten. The 13th century Beguinage in Louvain was built outside the city walls at that time. One of the biggest Beguinages in Flanders, it extends over three hectares and includes some 300 apartments in almost 100 houses. The Grand Beguinage of Louvain has the appearance of a small autonomous town, with houses lined in a network of narrow streets and small squares. The houses were constructed in the local traditional architectural style, adorned with a few sober elements in the Baroque style. The facades are composed of red bricks with sandstone crossbar frames for windows and doors. A typical element of Louvain's beguinage are the numerous dormers, often elaborated with crow-stepped gables and round arched windows. Of all the communities that survived the abolition of the Beguines, that of the Louvain Grand Beguinage is generally recognized as the oldest. The number of Beguines grew steadily, and in 1305 construction began on the Church of St. John the Baptist, which still exists today. The church was built in the 14th and 15th centuries in the Gothic style. The oldest part of Louvain's Beguinage includes houses dating from the 16th century. By 1962, long after the religious community had ceased to exist, the entire complex was bought by the University of Louvain.
Begging houses are small, single-story brick buildings whose style reflects the traditional urban architecture of the region. Located at the mouth of the River Dender, where it flows into the Schlet, the St. Alexis Beginage in Dendermond moved to its present location in 1288. Though it was almost completely destroyed by fire in the second half of the 16th century, it was rebuilt at the beginning of the 17th century. It was heavily damaged again in 1706, when Dendermond was under bombardment. Most of the houses are from the 17th and 18th centuries and built of bricks and or sandstone. They were adapted during the 19th century. In the Rhine Valley region, a series of condemnations were vigorously applied against the Beguines. But the Beguines in Flanders for the most part enjoyed the support of the religious authorities. The investigation into the orthodoxy of the Beguinages carried out by the bishops at the request of Pope John XXIII in 1320 was decided in their favor. The religious and political crisis the Lowlands underwent in the 16th and 17th centuries had an impact on the Beguinages. The institution disappeared completely in the Calvinist provinces of the north, but was maintained in those southern parts of the Lowlands which remained Catholic. From the middle of the 16th century, local bishops embraced the ideas of the Counter-Reformation and, supported by the conventional orders, re-established the old discipline in the Beguinages. This religious way of life enjoyed something of a revival in the following century, despite the damage suffered during the Dutch Revolt. Construction and restoration work intensified as the number of Beguines increased. The decline of the movement first became apparent in the 18th century and gathered pace after annexation by France in 1795. The Beguinages church was built in the Neo-Gothic style in 1928, following the plan of Maurice Vostart, in order to replace the church that was destroyed during the First World War. The church represents the most ancient element of the heritage of the Beguinage. The Beguinage Museum in a small baking house, decorated in the original 19th century style, with furniture and two bedrooms containing typical baking beds, is on display. Midway between Brussels and Antwerp, Mechelen is a pretty medieval city with a variety of important historical sites. Like many other Belgian cities, its main industry in the Middle Ages was cloth production, and its economic might once rivaled that of Brussels and Antwerp. For a short while in the early 16th century, it was even the capital of the Low Countries. Although its political power gradually waned from the late 16th century on, as civil administration increasingly was transferred to Brussels, it nevertheless retained its importance as the hub of religious power in Belgium. It remains the seat of Belgium's Roman Catholic primate. Strolling along Mechelen's quiet, narrow streets, you'll enter another world, a world of quiet spirituality, Mechelen's Beguinage. The oldest of Mechelen's two Beguinages are located in the heart of the old city center. This area was the first urban area in Flanders to benefit from subsidized historical renovation, and today it is a peaceful and picturesque residential area. Founded in the 13th century and transferred at the end of the 16th century within the confines of the old town walls, Mechelen's Beguinage features small houses and convents typified by picturesque inner yards and gardens beyond small doors. None of the constructions in the Middle Ages have remained wholly intact, with the exception of a few churches. 
The earliest Biggins houses, built with timber frames, were replaced by municipal ordinance by buildings of brick or stone in the second half of the 16th century, and especially in the 17th century, although they generally followed the original layout and size. The rising numbers of Biggins in the 17th century dictated further construction within the space originally available. In the 18th century, the number of Biggins declined, and their houses were demolished. New houses or buildings were incorporated into some Beguinages in the 19th and 20th centuries. Lear has a significant number of historical sites for a town of its size, and indeed has been nicknamed the Little Bruges. The 14th century Zimmer Tower was once part of the city walls, and was converted into an astronomical clock by Louis Zimmer in 1930. One of Lear's gems is its Beguinage. Dating from the 13th century, it ranks among the largest and most beautiful Beguinages in Belgium. Like most other Beguinages in Belgium, the Beguinage of Lear is a quiet and peaceful place, well suited to a pleasant stroll. Its traffic-free cobblestone streets take you centuries back in time. Most of the houses here, as well as the Baroque entrance gate and the Beguinage church, date from the 17th century. In its earliest years, the Beguinage of Lear received generous patronage from Duchess Eilidas, wife of Henry III, Duke of Brabant, which allowed it to grow quickly into a major Beguinage. At various points in its history, it suffered significant damage from fire and plundering. The Beguinage was closed down in the aftermath of the French Revolution, and only in 1814 were the Beguines allowed to open it again. The entire Beguinage occupies an area of 2 hectares and has a total of 162 houses, spread over 11 streets. Most houses were built in brick, adorned with some sandstone elements. The religious, socio-economic and cultural functions of the Beguinages and the development of these functions is reflected in both the general and specific layout of the buildings. Their architectural style takes its inspiration from the traditional architecture of the region, using local materials and adopting appropriate forms. They conceived of themselves as an enclosed social unit, providing for both the spiritual and the material needs of the specific community. The beautiful church of the Beguinage, dedicated to St. Margaret, is an example of Baroque architecture. The façade, with its Rococo influence, was completed in 1767. UNESCO declared the Beguinage as a World Heritage Site in 1998. Places of outstanding cultural importance, these spectacular urban oases delight visitors year-round.